I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube, and I'm here to show you what you can do with your very first Stitch Quarterly subscription. So you can either finish it, just like Priscilla did with the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. She's got all the information on her blog, or you can make a pillow with me today. And so to make the pillow, I've just got some general supplies and I'm gonna make it as I go. So I don't have exact fabric requirements because I'm gonna just play with it as I go. So I've got my piece that's cross stitch. I've got my pattern. If you're in the subscription, this would have come in your first subscription. And if not, it's gonna come out on the Fat Quarter Shop website 45 days after that subscription. I've got two fabrics. I'm gonna be using one as an inner border and one as an outer border. They're very similar fabrics to what Priscilla used. I've got a by Annie zipper that I can trim down. And I've got a white fabric and batting to put behind the top of the pillow. And for thread, I'm gonna be stitching with Arful Color 2000 for the piecing. And then I've just got a yellow thread for accent if I need it and um, we're ready to get started and we're just gonna be making this pillow as we go and at the end, we'll see what it looks like. So now what I'm gonna do is just kinda play with my pillow and see what I think is going to look the best. So I'm going to, this is a perfectly square design and so I was thinking I could do this as my inner border, but to me that looks kinda funny because it's so straight. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it on the bias, which means Fold it on the diagonal, which I'll show you how to cut that, and it will look a little bit like this. And so really what I'm doing right now is just placing my fabric and seeing what I think looks good. And so from here, I like the distance between here and here. I want there to be a little bit of room. I don't want to stitch right on here. So that is about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's about eight squares away. And then I want to give a little bit of room for a quarter inch seam allowance that you're gonna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mark 11 squares all the way around and that's gonna give me enough gap. So I'm gonna start there. And what I'm gonna do is just count 11 squares over. I have a friction pin. A friction pin will disappear with heat later, the ink will. And, um, you're not gonna see it anyway because it's gonna be in the seam allowance, but instead of just cutting with a ruler on cross stitch, I like to cut on the square so that it is more square. So I'm gonna count 11 squares away the entire design. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit. And so looking at that, with a quarter inch seam, you're gonna see that you're gonna see about that much, which is about three quarters of an inch, so I, I like that. So I, I like that. So I'm gonna just draw the line. This is just gonna be a cutting guide for me. And then I'll count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. And so when I'm doing pillows, I kinda just wing it instead of i don't it's not like when i make a quilt and i sit down and i plan everything i kind of just do what i think looks best and hope that it comes out the best so i'm going to count again and i do go pretty slow with pillows compared to my quilting making a pillow will take a lot longer sometimes than a quilt And so I'm just following those lines on the eight o'clock. And so from there, that's gonna be kind of where we cut. So first I'm gonna cut, and I'm just gonna cut directly on the lines that I drew. And then when I turn on my Creative Grids ruler, I've got lines going both directions. So I'm gonna line up the top here 
with the line I drew. Just make my fabric adjust a little bit since it's not quilting fabric. Just kind of adjust it a little bit. But you want to make sure that here that you get a really nice clean square edge. And so here I've lined up the line and you can see it goes a little bit crooked right here. My line is going a little bit out. So I'm just gonna hold this and just pull it in a little bit. And so I've still got a straight line here. I'm just kind of forcing my fabric to move a little bit so that I still get that square on the edge because you don't want to have a little dip right there. And on this one, I'm gonna line up the top and the bottom and cut. And so now this is the center of my pillow. It's looking really good. So now I'm gonna kinda look at my fabric again. I'm gonna put the, cut this this way. I'm gonna kinda just trim that way. And I'm gonna pretend I'm just gonna use this as a guide. So I'm gonna put a quarter inch under, cause that's my seam allowance, what I'm gonna be using today. This is on the bias. So if it was on the straight, it would look like this. I think it looks better on the bias. So I'm going to turn it. And I'm just gonna look at that. And then I'm gonna place my outer border on it. And then I'm gonna kinda decide how wide I want this skinny inner border to be. And so I don't want it to be too wide because I feel like it's overpowering. So I kind of like this, so I'm gonna measure it, and that is half an inch. So if I want half an inch showing, and I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam, that would be half an inch, plus a quarter inch on each side, which would be one inch. So that would mean I would need one inch strips for the inside. And then for the outside, I kind of need to see, I probably will cut the outside three and a half inches. And I think that's gonna be way too big for the pillow, but I like to cut bigger and then I can trim down. So first I'm going to set my cross stitch aside so I don't accidentally cut it. And to cut bias strips, You'll take your Creative Grids ruler and on your ruler, there will be a 45 degree marking right here and it will say 45 degrees. And you will put that on the edge of your fabric. So this is the 45 degree angle and you're gonna cut. And when you're working with bias, with fabric on the bias, which is what this is, it's gonna be very stretchy it's gonna move a lot. So you just have to be really, go cut really slow when you do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut four one inch strips that I'm gonna be using for the border, the inner border. So I'm gonna cut them, that's one strip. And of course, when you're making your pillow, if you want it to be wider, you can definitely do wider, skinnier, you can do whatever um, you think is going to look the best. So when I'm cutting, I am using this one inch line on my Creative Grids ruler, and that gives me one inch. So I've got that, and then I'm probably going to be using this for my binding, which is the outside edge, but I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and we'll talk about binding later. So I'll just set this aside. And so I've got four one inch strips.
And so when I add it, it's going to look a little bit like this. And I'm gonna show you how you add it and the best way to do that where the bias strips will not stretch. So those are our inner borders. And for our outer borders, which is gonna go on the outside, I'm gonna cut some three and a half inch strips. And again, I'm probably gonna cut that down later. So I've got my outer border fabric and on the fold, I'm gonna line up my two folds, take my Creative Grids ruler, put a line on the ruler, one of these lines that go across this way, on the fold, and trim. I'm gonna rotate this by trying to not move the fabric too much. I'm gonna use the three and a half inch line on my ruler, which is right here line that up on the edge and cut. I'm gonna set this aside. And on the fold, I'm just gonna cut. So that is gonna give me four strips that are three and a half inches wide. So I'm going to walk you through what we're going to be doing next, just so you can visually see what I'm doing. The first thing we will be doing is adding our left and right inner border. We're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance, stitch, and then press. So from there, we're going to add our top and bottom inner border and press. Then we're going to move to our outer borders. So we'll add our left outer border and our right outer border, press. And then we will add our top and bottom outer border. And once we have that, that's gonna be our pillow top. So like we talked about, we're gonna add to the sides first. So I am going to put my fabric and my Ada cloth right sides together. And I'm gonna be using a wonder clip today because it won't put holes in your fabric and I don't want anything to pull. So I'm just gonna put some wonder clips down and I wanna make sure my fabric and my Ada are right next to each other. And so I've got about four wonder clips on here. It's nice and lined up. I've got a quarter inch foot on my machine and I'm gonna use the edge of it as my guide. I'm gonna put my fabric under and I'm gonna start stitching on the quilting fabric. The Ada fabric will get caught in a second but I'll just start stitching before I get to the Ada. So I'm just gonna stitch really slow all the way down keeping the very edge of the fabric on my foot. And I'm gonna use about a 1.5 to a 2.0 stitch length and just go really slow. When I get to the end, I'm just gonna keep stitching on my quilting fabric. And you can see that when I stitched, I stitched further than my Ada on both ends. That way you don't have any loose threads or anything. And it looks really nice. That's how it's looking. So we're gonna do the other side the same way. And I've got these tails hanging off and that's okay. You can just trim them a little bit if you want, but we're gonna trim them to the exact size in a little bit. So we've added our first inner border on the right and we're gonna add our inner border on the left. I'm gonna do the same thing 
I'll rotate it so it's easier for me to put the Clover Wonder Clips on. And the most thing to most important thing to do is just when you're doing a pillow, just go really nice and slow. Don't rush it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'll start stitching before my Ada cloth, stitch all the way down with a quarter inch seam and end at the end. A little bit past the end. And just go nice and slow. The color that I'm using to stitch with is a neutral. It's a Aurifil color 2000. I like to use a really light thread so it doesn't show up. And it is important to use 100% cotton thread when you're stitching this. And now we're going to press. So what I'm going to do is set my seams, which is a quilting term that if you're just a cross stitcher, you might not know what that means. So I'm gonna show you. Setting your seam means putting your iron just right on your seam. It flattens it, it locks your seams in, and when you press out, it's not gonna be as hard. So I'm gonna do that on both sides, nice and flat. And when I'm ironing, I'm not gonna jerk my iron. I'm just gonna be very gentle. So when I iron, I'm going to finger press out, and then I'm gonna take the tip of my iron and just press right in that crease. I don't want to put the iron all the way down because I don't want to smush my cross stitches. But I'm just going right on that seam so it's nice and flat. And then I can use a little bit of steam. And you just want it to be nice and flat. So you don't want your fabric to be like this where you can see a pucker and you can put your finger in. You want it to be nice and really flat. And you just use that steam and get it nice and flat and just focus on having your iron on your fabric and not your stitching and we'll do the same thing on the other side set your seam finger press put the tip of your iron on the edge And it's looking really nice. So now I want to trim my tails off. I call these little tails. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to make sure before I cut it's completely straight. So I've got a straight line here on the ruler, a straight line here, and I'm going to cut. It might take a little sliver off and that's okay. And the great thing is since we stitched on the quilting all of your little loose threads have now come off and it's nice and clean on the back. We'll do the same thing on the other side, really using the lines on the ruler. So I've got the line here and I'm looking at that seam, the seam intersection that I just sewed. And I'm gonna cut. And now we're going to add to the top and bottom the same exact way. So lay your fabric down and use your little wonder clips to clip everything in place. And we're gonna do the same exact thing, stitching a quarter inch seam allowance starting before and ending after.
and we will now do the bottom. So we're gonna do the same exact thing. Set our seams. Both sides, nice and slow. Finger press. And I'm pressing toward the fabric. Just finger press and then take the edge, the tip of your iron and just go right on there making sure you don't have a duck pleat. And once you've gone across and it's nice and flat, then you can just gently lay your iron down. And you can see that when I'm pressing, I'm trying not to press on my cross stitch Ada. Do the same thing on the other side. and then we're gonna trim our tails off. Okay, so now I'm gonna trim these tails off. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Place my ruler line on the line of the seam I just sewed. And you can follow the lines on the bottom. Adjust accordingly and trim. And a sliver might come off, and that's okay. That's just gonna straighten it. Then I'm going to do the other side the same way. Just taking my time, lining up that, lining up the bottom, and pressing, cutting, and cutting. So now I'm going to add to the, to the right side again. I'm gonna start building my outer border. So you'll take your yellow strips that we had cut at three and a half inches, and I don't need it that long, so I might just chop some of it off. And I'm gonna put the fabrics right sides together. And you can either use Clover Wonder Clips to hold this together or pins. Since I'm putting fabric on fabric, I'm gonna go ahead and use pins here, and I'm just gonna line up the fabrics right on the very edge and I like to use really sharp, pointy pins. So when I start stitching again, I'm gonna start over here and end past, and that way on the back, you won't have any loose threads. We're gonna do the same thing, quarter inch seam, white thread, I pull my pins out right before I get to it. I never sew over my pins. So now I've added my right outer border. Look how pretty that looks. And we're gonna go ahead, do the same thing on the left. So fabrics right sides together. And 
stitch down this side. And now we will press. So again, we're gonna set our seam. Finger press out. By finger pressing, I think it just gets it really nice and flat before you put the iron on it. And again, just put the tip of the iron and I'm pulling so that I don't get a duck pleat or a puckered pleat or I like everything really nice and flat. That looks really good. Same thing on the other side. So now we're going to trim and again I'm going to do the same thing. Line up the line with the seam at the top and then you can see on the bottom this is kind of in so I'm going to pull it out so that everything is lined up and straight and I'm following the lines. This is what is going to give you a square pillow by making sure everything is really flat here and that it's straight across here and I'm going to trim and that's nice and flat. Turn it and you can see that I'm not, I'm not trying to get a perfect size. I'm just trying to get a, a really nice straight line. And so here, just adjust it if you need to. And then we're just going to add our top and bottom. So we can start with the top. And we're just going to do the same thing we've been doing the whole way. So you could use this technique if you wanted your pillow to have three borders. You can just do the same thing. And I really like the technique of adding your fabrics and then trimming it because then you get a perfectly square pillow. And again, when I stitch, I'm going to start at one end and go to the other end. And then at the back, you're not going to see any loose threads. There's the top. And so we're going to add the bottom again, right sides together, pin and stitch. Now we're going to press and trim. Okay, so I'm gonna set my seam all the way across. Finger press open. And press and just make sure the tip of your iron is right between the yellow and the brown fabric.
and if you look on the back you can see that all of my seams are nice and flat now if one of your seams was kind of like this or you know messy or something you can just fix it from the back anything that's lumpy might show through when you finish your pillow so when i'm ironing my cross stitch i do try to keep my iron away from my stitches if it does touch it's not going to hurt it in any way but i did try to kind of keep my iron more on the fabric and less on the actual cross stitch piece so now i've got my pillow and i'm going to cut the edges and again i'm going to be lining up my lines make sure they're straight and i'm using this blue rotary cutter and i just remembered that when i started i had a yellow rotary cutter and they're all the same i just happen to have like five of them that I use interchangeably. So if you see a rotary color cutter change color, that's okay. They're all just the same. Okay. So now I'm going to measure and see what this comes out to be. Let's see. So I'm using the ruler and it's 16 and a quarter by about 16. So it is a little bit wider. So I'm going to trim just a tiny bit off of the left and the right so that they come out the same. You really don't have to do that. Um, I just am going to do that. And I'm going to be using a 16 inch pillow. So that'll be great. It'll match perfectly. So now we've got a 16 inch square pillow, which is perfect. Okay, so we've got this as our pillow top, and as you can see, on the back is your stitching. So you can either put this into your pillow, or you can add a little bit of quilting and a backing for this. So I'm gonna show you how you do that. It's totally optional and you don't have to. I just got a white fabric. You could put a pretty fabric if you want. This is what your actual pillow will touch. And I cut it a couple of inches bigger, maybe two or three inches bigger than my top. And then I went ahead and got a Quilter's Dream fusible batting. And the reason I got that is we're not gonna be quilting too much because you obviously don't want to quilt or stitch on your cross stitch. So you need a fusible that's gonna really hold it down. And fusible means that the batting will stick to one side of your piece. So this, I selected a mid loft. I don't want anything too puffy. And when it comes out of the package, it will tell you which side is fusible. So that means on this side, there's a little bit of stickiness. And if you put your iron on this side, you will mess up your iron. So if you do that on accident, the way to get it off is with wax paper, obviously when it's cold. So I'm gonna put the fusible side up and put my pillow top on top. And I'm just gonna make sure that the back is the same. So the back is bigger than the front. And then I'll take my little sticker off that says fusible side. And then make sure it's really flat. Then I'm going to bring my iron. Now, like what I said is this is sticky, so you cannot get your iron on it. So we're going to just iron around. And you are going to have to iron on your cross stitch to get this to stick down. Just do it really light. And the main thing is you want it nice and flat. So as you iron, pressing it around and just make sure you don't get the sticky on your iron. Just smooth as you go. I've got my iron on a lower setting instead of the super high setting and that way won't be too, too much pressing on the stitches. So now you've got kind of like a little quilt top, but it's a pillow top. And so on the back is what you're gonna see. 
this is kind of stuck down gently. It's not sticky, but it, you know, it can come up if you need it to, but it's stuck down a little bit. I'm going to put some pins in. And when I put the pins in, I'm not gonna touch any of my Ada cloth. And I'm just gonna put the pins in to keep it nice and flat. This is totally optional. And um, with these pins, you might kind of prick yourself as you're stitching, so you might not like to do it. I just prefer to do it. And I put my pins towards the center because hopefully I'll keep my hands on the outside. I can guarantee you that I will stick myself though. And what we're trying to do here is we're gonna stitch around just to hold it in place and it's going to give the front of your pillow a little bit of softness because you have the batting in there. And the fusible just helps it stick down. You don't have to use fusible batting. It's just gonna make this a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna stitch in the ditch and I'm going to just put, a, that just means I'm gonna stitch right next to my intersection. So I'm gonna stitch slightly to the left right here on this brown fabric. I'm gonna make my stitch length a little bit wider so my stitches look really nice and pretty and even, and I'm gonna go ahead and leave the cream thread on. And then after that, I will also stitch out here, but first I'm gonna stitch on the inside and see how that looks to determine what I will do next. Before I'm quilting anything, I always, on the right side, I'm gonna kinda play with stitches to see what length I want. So I'll first start with a 2.0 stitch length and just stitch, and it's gonna be a different thickness than normal, so it will look different. So I'll do about 10 stitches, and that's a 2.0. Then I'll move to the right and do like a 3.0. Go to the right again and do like a 3.5. And then I'm gonna look at my stitches right here. So I did a two, a three, and a 3.5. And to me, the three looks really nice, the center one. And so I will stitch with a 3.0 stitch length. And anytime I'm quilting anything, I always do this, just stitch it kind of on the side. Then you know what your stitches are gonna look like because they do look different than if you were just doing two quilted fat, two cotton fabrics together rather than three layers. So now that I have my stitch set, I'm gonna come to one of the corners, put my needle down right in the corner. Put my foot down and when I'm stitching, I will be stitching with my needle down in the needle down position. I'm gonna do two stitches, reverse two stitches, or you can do the lock stitch if you have a fancy machine. My machine doesn't do that, but that is going to kind of lock my stitches in, and I'm gonna go really slow, and I'm stitching right on the left side of the brown. When I get to the corner, I'm gonna go all the way until I get right to the edge. So my needle's down and I'm gonna pivot and just keep going all the way around. Do all of your corners just like that. Now I'm gonna get back to where I started. Reverse stitch twice, cut my thread, and then I'm gonna cut the two threads really close so you don't see them. And then you can see where I stitched in the ditch. You can barely see my stitches because I went right on the edge. So now that I have this stitch down, I'm gonna remove my pins all the way around. So now I've got all my pins out and I'm going to mark some lines 
on where I'm going to stitch. So now I have stitched in the ditch and I've got this ironed down and it's not gonna really come apart on the top because it's fusible, it's fused down. Now the back is not fused down, but I don't think it's gonna come apart. So it's nice and flat and I, you can leave it just like this or you can add stitching, accent stitching. So I've got two artful colors. I've got color 2000, which is the cream that I pieced with. And I've got 1135, that's a yellow. And so I'm gonna look at the threads and I like how the yellow blends more. So I will be quilting with the yellow and I will use the yellow as the top thread and my bobbin thread. If you use a white bobbin thread, you might have some white that will come through to the top. So I'm gonna use a friction pin again. This is what I'm gonna use to mark my lines and it will disappear with heat later. And I'm gonna kind of look with my ruler and I'm gonna kind of start with the, the intersection between the brown and the yellow. And if I do like an inch and a half, that's how far my stitching lines would be. If I do an inch, they're gonna look like this. If I do half an inch, it'll look like this. Three quarters of an inch. So I kind of have to just decide how far apart I want my lines to be. So if I do an inch, I would have one line, two lines. That's probably not enough. If I do half an inch, it'd be like one line, two lines, three lines, four lines. That might be too much accent. So I kind of just have to play with what I think. So I'm gonna do three quarters of an inch, I think. Because if I do three quarters, it'll be one, two, three. So just kind of playing with my ruler. I think three quarters will look best. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a friction pin. I'm gonna mark three quarters inch away. Now a friction pin is not meant for quilting, but I use it in quilting all the time. If this goes back to really cold, like 30 degrees, or you somehow put your pillow in the freezer, your lines will come back. But I live in Texas where it's hot and I don't worry about that. If you want to use a different marking tool, you definitely can. There's lots of marking tools. And so I'm just marking three quarters inch away. And I'm basically gonna be creating a big square accent all the way around. In several spots. So again, three quarters inch. So when I'm quilting on this, I will go just within the square. To here, to here, to here, to here. So you're gonna ignore this extra part that I put. Then I wanna do another three quarters inch away. So three quarters of an inch plus three quarters of an inch is an inch and a half. So now I'm gonna mark an inch and a half away. And again, I'm just using my line on my ruler. And with the friction pen, the heat goes away. So if you draw your lines and you don't like them, you can iron it, they'll go away and you can start again. So again, when I quilt this one, I will just go into a big square. So any lines that I drew outside of my square, I'm just gonna ignore those. So now an inch and a half plus three quarters is, let's see, two and a quarter. So now I'm gonna measure two and a quarter around. So basically I'm just creating lines all the way around three quarters of an inch away. So 
and you can decide whatever you think looks best on yours. And again, you don't even have to do this part. I just want to have a little bit of an accent on my pillow. So when my quilting is done, I'm going to quilt on three squares, inner square, middle square, outer square. So let's do that first, and then I'm going to show you how to baste on the inside and then trim your top. So if you are not interested in doing these lines, you can just skip ahead to the basting section. So I have added my yellow thread. I'm going to start in one of my corners. I'm going to put my needle down right in this corner of my drawn lines, stitch twice, reverse stitch to tack it down, and I'm just going to follow the line. I've got an open toe foot so that I can see where my needle is, and I'll just go really slow, and I'm going to use the same stitch length I used over here. I also went ahead and put this bed on my machine. And if you have a bed like this that most machines do come with one, it really helps to keep your pillow flat and your stitches will lay flat. stitch to your corner, leave your needle down, and rotate. I'm going to stitch to exactly where I started. Reverse two stitches, cut my threads. I will trim my threads. And then you do the same thing on round two and round three. So now what I want to do is you've got this edge and I really like to base my pillows before I finish. So I'm going to stitch maybe an eighth of an inch right on the edge before we trim it down. And that will really help your fabric not flip up when you're trying to do your binding. So just base down about an eighth of an inch on the inside. And I'm going to do just a super huge stitch because it just needs to stay in place and it doesn't need to be pretty and it's going to be covered up with your binding in a little bit. So our pillow top is now quilted and I'm going to iron the borders to get rid of the ink. And look how pretty that quilting is looking. And you're gonna see that my corners are not perfectly square, but I'm gonna square them up. And again, you wanna just not touch your iron on the batting. So 
So I ironed this first because I want it to be nice and flat. If you cut it before you iron it, it might um, not come out as good. So I recommend ironing first. And you can see right here, this is obviously an ugly corner and we don't want that. So I'm gonna show you how you trim this up and that is why we made all of this bigger. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just trim all the way around about three and an eighth inch from this edge. And that's gonna, that's gonna chop off some of my basting stitch and that's okay. That way it'll be perfectly square. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my ruler with a three and an eighth inch line and just cut from that. Now the Creative Grids rulers have a grippy dot on the back and that's gonna help it stay in place when you're cutting, especially when you have this many layers. So I'm gonna cut that turn place the line at the top that's going to give you that straight corner three and an eighth stop right there trim and that little piece that was sticking off is now gone do the same thing line up the top of the ruler about three and an eighth from the intersection of the brown and the yellow. And trim. When you get to the last one, you're gonna to wanna to line up the top and the bottom. And three and an eighth. Now, if you don't wanna be as technical, you can definitely just trim all the way around. You don't have to be, um, as perfectionist as I'm being. And that is our pillow top. Now I have this all squared up. Some of my basting stitches came off, but most of them stayed, so it's, it's gonna be good just like it is. This is how the back looks. You're never gonna see the back because this is gonna go inside your pillow. And now we're gonna move to make a zipper back. So now we're gonna prepare the back of our pillow. So this is the front. And what we're gonna do is cut a piece that is maybe two or three inches bigger. So I'm just going to, and you can do a little bit less if you want. I, this is just a scrap of fabric, so this is gonna work best for me that I already have the scrap and I don't have to cut it down. So I'm just gonna cut it a little bit bigger. So it's a little bit bigger. I don't need as much on the sides. So I'm gonna trim the sides down a little bit. I do like it to be a little bit bigger. And then I've got about two inches here and two inches here, so that's gonna give me enough room to put my zipper across the back. So to make it easy, I'm just gonna fold my fabric in half and I'm gonna cut a piece. And this is where the zipper is going to go. So then you can bring it back and you can visualize that we're gonna put the zipper here. Now, I like to use By Annie zippers. They're nylon, you can cut through them, they're big, and you don't need a zipper foot because I don't have a fancy machine and my machine won't use a zipper foot. So, so this is where your zipper is going to go. What I'm gonna do is put my zipper right side together with my fabric, leave your zipper pull off to the side, completely off to the side and ignore it completely. And you can either use pins <clears throat> or wonder clips. <clears throat> you can either use pins or wonder clips, and I'm going to just use a wonder clip. Now on a By Annie zipper, it has a really wide girth on it, so that's why you don't need a zipper foot. And so we're gonna get the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how to sew the first part of the zipper down. It's super easy. So now I'm gonna start, and again, your zipper pull is completely out of the way. I have put my creamish white thread back on my machine with my quarter inch foot, and I moved my stitch length to a shorter stitch back to a 2.0 stitch length. I'm gonna start stitching before the fabric and my zipper will be on top because cotton is easier to touch your feed dog. So put your zipper on top and just stitch with a quarter inch seam.
and I'm stitching past my cotton fabric. So now this is how your zipper looks and you're gonna see that it naturally will flip to where it's going to press towards the fabric. And it's easier if we go ahead and press this now. Here, I'm just going to finger press the fabric away from the zipper. And it's really easy to have this be really puffy and have a little pleat, and I'm just gonna kinda pull it. You can iron right on the zipper. And I'm just gonna press this away. And we're gonna top stitch it in a little bit. After we get the other side added, we're gonna put a little nice top stitch on it. So now that we have that press, we've got the other side, which is right here. And we're gonna put this fabric right side together on top of the zipper. I'm gonna flip it over to put my Clover Wonder Clips on. And since I made this wider than the pillow, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to worry about lining anything up. And we're just gonna go back, stitch the same way with the zipper on top, quarter inch seam. We're just gonna do the same thing where we finger press that away. Just get it nice and flat. So when you're using a by Annie zipper, it is nylon, so you can, you can iron right on top of it. So we're gonna get this nice and flat. Okay, so now you can leave your zipper just like this, or you can top stitch. I'm gonna top stitch right where the yellow starts. I am switching back to my yellow thread, my foot that is open toe, and I'm gonna start stitching on the zipper so that I don't have any loose strings, and I'm gonna use a 2.0 stitch length, and I'm just gonna stitch that down really nice. I'm gonna go slow so my stitches are pretty. And I'm gonna stitch off the zipper, flip it around, and do the same thing, and then I'll show you my stitches. So we've got this right side down. We're gonna put our pillow top right side up. And if you look on the right, if I leave my zipper like this, I'm gonna unzip from right to left. But I prefer to unzip from left to right. So I'm gonna actually move that zipper to the other side. So your backing is right side down, your top is right side up, and you can either center it in the center by just folding it. And look, it's already in the center. It really doesn't have to be exactly in the center. And then what you're gonna do is pull your zipper pull. This is the most important thing. Pull your zipper pull to the center now so that you have a zipper pull. And then I'm going to cut my back to match the size of my front. And I'm gonna cut that zipper pull off. So if you had your pull out here, you would no longer be able to zip your zipper. So I'm just gonna cut all four sides to match. And you can see you can cut right through that zipper. Um, using a metal zipper, you can't cut through. So now we have the front and the back the same size. I'm going to use Wonder Clips, clip it all the way around, and we're going to stitch the edge And right here, where your zipper is, it's really two pieces. So you have to really make sure that's nice and flat so that it'll look pretty. We're gonna baste all the way around, all four sides, 
and then we're going to add binding to the edge and we're going to do our binding bias which is a little bit different than the last pillow that i taught you Now before I baste, I'm just going to look to make sure I've got everything held in place. I will start stitching at this section and we're just going to baste an eighth of an inch around all the way around with a big fat 4.0 stitch and then we'll move to binding. So again, I've got this opening with my zipper and I want to close that first just to make sure I really get that closed. So just an eighth of an inch in, really big fat basting stitch all the way around the edge. Making sure you get all of the layers. So now we have everything sewn together and basted together. And you can see you can put your pillow in and it looks like this little section right here is a little uneven. So I'm gonna fix that and then we're gonna move to binding. So now we have our top done. We have our back attached. We've got a zipper that opens and you can see the inside and you can see that that white fabric covers up the cross stitch so it won't get damaged. And now I'm going to add binding to the outside. So for a pillow, I prefer two inch wide binding and we're gonna cut it on the bias. So I'm gonna move this aside and when you're cutting on the bias, we're gonna go ahead and use the cut we had done previously when we cut the borders and I'm just gonna cut two inch strips. So I'm just gonna put my ruler on and line it up with the two inch and we're just going to cut i think we need about four or five strips that might be too many i will just kind of see just going to cut four or five and then we'll use what we what we need so sometimes when you cut on the bias you've got a really long cut so you got to move your ruler down so i'm just going to keep cutting i'm going to cut I'm just going to go ahead and cut five. I think you only need four. I think you only need four. I'm just going to cut four. Hopefully four will be enough. Okay, so I will save this for another project. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to lay out my binding strips. I'm going to kind of use the lines on my ruler just to kind of line them up. And you're going to notice bias is very stretchy. So you have to be really careful when you're working with it to not stretch it and not do what I just did. But what I want to do here is I want to cut an even edge so I can sew these strips together more easily. So I'm just going to kind of cut this off so I have an edge when I'm joining. And now we're going to join our strips together to make one big long binding for our pillow. So to join my strips, I'm going to take one of the edges and I'm going to put one of my straight edges so that we are creating a join. I'm going to use pins because this is bias. So I'm going to just kind of secure this in place. And what we're going to be doing is drawing a diagonal line that we can sew on so that we create this crease. Now one thing when I first started sewing is sometimes I would sew the wrong way and you can see that that doesn't work. So what I do if you're a beginner is kind of just fold it the way that works and then that's the way you know which direction to draw the line so you don't do what I used to do. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna draw a line from point to point to stitch on 
and I like to have this bottom fabric sticking out a little bit so that when I get to this point, I go exactly to the point and that's gonna give me a nicer um, join because if your fabric slips under there, you're not gonna see it. So now I've got my open toe foot and I'm gonna go back to a normal stitch length of about 1.5 to two and I'm just gonna stitch directly on the line. Now I'm gonna leave that on the machine. I'm gonna pull this back up. I'm gonna join another one. So I'm just gonna ignore this right here. I'm gonna put pins. And when you're pinning, it's really good to line up the very top really nice and straight so that when you draw your line and you um, iron and everything, it's gonna come out straight instead of wonky. So I'm gonna draw the line again. And I kind of just do this as I go. And again, if you're new and you're not sure if it's gonna work, you just go like this and you can see that it is going to work. That took me years to figure out. I don't wanna admit how many years it took, but long time. And so you can see, now that that fabric is below here, you can see that you're really trying to go right to that point. We've got to add one more. So we're going to do the same thing. And putting this at the top and making it flush is the reason I cut that straight. Because that's just going to give you better results. Draw the line. And you can see that I have this chain piece together. We're gonna clip that apart. So now we're gonna trim a quarter inch away from the seam so you can see my seam right here. I'm just gonna trim a quarter inch away. You can just eyeball it and then trim this little piece off. And we're gonna do that on all three of our seams and we have three seams because we have four strips. And now we're going to press. So when I'm doing binding, I like to press my seams open because it's gonna give you a flatter result. When I was new, I didn't do that. So if you're new and you're not comfortable with that, you can just press to one side. So first I'm gonna press, oops, that was hot. I'm gonna press to one side. And then I'm gonna go back and press open. And the reason that I do this, press to one side and then open, is I get burnt less easily, and I just think it comes out flatter. So, set my seam, finger press, press to one side, press open. So now that you have your big long strip, you're going to put wrong sides together and you want to just put the edges right together. So when you're pressing, you want them to be right together. You don't want it to be like this. And I just kind of start on one end and I go slowly and try not to burn myself. And you can see that it's biased. So it's gonna be kind of, it's gonna try to curl a little bit and you just wanna go a little bit at a time and just press wrong sides together. Now 
and you do that for the entire strip. You just want to make sure when you get to your joins that this stays nice and flat. So I'll show you. So when you open it back up, you can see that it's nice and flat. So when we were doing our binding strips earlier, I was kind of just winging it because that's what I do with the pillow. But to know how many inches of a binding you need, you would take the perimeter of your pillow plus 20 inches, and that should be plenty. I just, when I'm, when I'm doing stuff like this, I kind of just guess. So what we're going to be doing is adding this binding all the way around. We're going to start at the bottom. Our raw edges are gonna to touch raw edges, and I'm gonna teach you how to go all the way around and how to hand stitch it down. So let's go to the sewing machine. So we have got our raw edges with our raw edges, and I'm gonna leave a tail, maybe five, 10, 10 inches or so, and I'm just gonna start. I like to start at the bottom, but you can really start anywhere. Just put your raw edges together. I'm gonna to use a quarter inch seam, and I'm going to just stitch. And we're gonna stitch till we get to the corner. We want to stop a quarter inch away from the edge of the pillow top. So I'm gonna put a ruler, quarter inch seam, and I'm measuring right against this yellow, and I'm going to mark. I'm going to stitch directly to the mark. Leave my needle down. I'm going to rotate. You don't want to clip your thread here because if you clip your thread, it might unravel later. You're just going to stitch off completely. And that's going to leave your thread out here so you don't see it. You're going to turn your piece. and you want to rotate your binding, and you should have a 45 degree angle right here that should look like a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna finger press that down, and I'm gonna pull the binding back. Finger press again, just get it nice and in place, and we're gonna start stitching. We're gonna go all the way to the other end. And I don't pin, I just attach the binding and adjust as I go. Okay, so now we're to the other edge. We're gonna mark a quarter inch away from the edge of the top, which is your yellow fabric. Mark a quarter inch away. Stitch directly to the line. Rotate. Stitch off. So what you wanna do is, again, fold your binding to make sure it has a 45 degree angle. Finger press it. Pull it back down, finger press it again, and it should be a nice square here. If it's not a square, you want to unstitch and redo that corner. And then we're just gonna start stitching again to the other corner and do that on all the corners. Okay, so on this corner, you can see that this is not, I stitched too far because it's not in alignment. So I'm a little bit off. So if I kept that stitch, 
I would have a really ugly corner. So I'm gonna unstitch that and start that corner over again. So you just unstitch your last couple of stitches. And so now you can see that it is in alignment. And I have my zipper pull right here. It's kind of in the way, so I'm gonna move it out of the way. Okay, so now we're towards where we're close to the join. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch just a few more stitches and stop and just leave an opening that's maybe seven inches wide. And we're gonna go and join these two ends. So now we have these two tails and what we wanna do is just in the very center, it's not scientific, just we're gonna trim one of them. It doesn't matter which one. We're just gonna trim it kinda in the middle. So you have a little bit of room to work with. So you've got this. Now you're gonna lay the other side on top and we cut our binding two inches. So the number you're gonna use on this step is whatever your binding is cut. So two inches. So I need to measure two inches. This is where your cut one is, just so you can see it two inches to the left of the cut one. So I'm gonna use this ruler, and this is where the bottom one is, and we're gonna, we're gonna measure two inches, and we're going to cut. And that was the right amount. So now you have this, and it overlaps two inches. So now we're gonna join our tails. You're gonna put your fabrics Open your tails, put them right sides together. So you're kind of doing that, if you can see that. And I like to put a lot of pins in so that the fabric doesn't move when I'm stitching. And I'll just take a big wonder clip and kind of move this out of the way so that you're not pulling. And then we're gonna draw a line from the top left to the bottom right. I'm gonna see where it joins. And then we're gonna draw a line. And then we are going to go stitch on this line. And when we stitch on it, it's going to encompass it. Okay, so now we're going to stitch directly on that line. And then you can see that it's it fits. So now we're gonna trim and press. So you'll just start stitching and you're gonna stitch over your previous stitches on the top and the bottom. And that's why you don't have to back stitch because you're securing your stitches by going back over them. Okay, so now this is an optional step, but I like to press my binding away from my pillow and that's gonna help pull the fabric to the back and I'm going to show you how to hand stitch the binding on the back. I also think by ironing, it gives you a really crisp look. 
So now what I'm going to do is flip it to the other side and I'm gonna use the Wonder Clips and clip it down all the way around the four sides. That's gonna help me save time when I'm stitching because I won't have to hold the fabric, it'll already be held in place. So when I get to the corners, I'm gonna clip. So I'll turn it to the side that has your stitching and you're just gonna clip a little section off, making sure you don't go through your stitches. And that's gonna take some of the bulk out when you're doing the hand stitching. If you don't trim some of it off, it will be a big lump in the corner. So we're to the next corner. So you've got your stitching there. I'm just gonna cut some off. So for binding, I'm gonna use Clover 4973 binding needles. I'll use the longest one, and the reason I use these is they're nice and thin. I like a really nice thin needle for binding, and I'm gonna show you how you hand stitch the back. So first, you can thread your needle while it's still on the spool because that's gonna run the best way for you in terms of knotting, so if you knot if you thread your needle before you cut the end, you will have the thread going the correct direction. And sometimes it is hard to thread an applique needle because the holes are small. And then I'm just gonna cut off. And where I cut, I'm going to tie a knot. And I just do a basic knot. I'm going to hide that knot. I'm going to put my needle right in the stitch where that machine stitch is, right directly in there. I will come up right in the crease in the safe section. And I'm gonna go back down where I started and just start traveling. I go about an eighth of an inch. I make really small stitches. And the key is to go right on the outside of your machine stitches. And when you come back up, come up as close to where you just had your needle so that you don't see your stitches. You're gonna go all the way until you get to your machine stitches on the corner. When you get to where your machine stitch is, I'm gonna put a couple, maybe one or two stitches in that same section just to kind of secure it. Okay. Then I'm gonna turn. And I'm going to create a 45 degree angle right there, just with my finger. I'm going to come up right where that tip of the 45 degree angle, angle is. Just do a couple stitches there. That's going to keep it nice and secure. And then you'll see you have a 45 degree angle on the back and on the front. And then you're just gonna keep stitching all the way around to get to the very end.
Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and end my thread. And what I'll do is I'll do a stitch. I'm gonna go back in directly where that stitch just came back out and do another stitch in the same hole. When I come back, I'm gonna put my needle through the circle. It's gonna create a knot. I'm gonna put my needle back in and hide it and just cut it off. And then I'll show you how you start your next. First, thread your needle. Where you cut, you're gonna make a knot. Now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna start, say I stopped here, I'm gonna start stitching here and I'm gonna put my needle all the way under to hide it. And then go back over previous stitches, that knot is going to be hidden and you just keep going and that's gonna keep it nice and secure in case that knot comes out. And we're just gonna sew all the way till we get to the other end. So to stitch over the zipper, I'm just going to stitch on the white part, which is the nylon, until I get to the actual teeth of the zipper. Do a little stitch right there, kind of like we did in the corner. And then we're going to kind of go under the teeth and go to the other side of the teeth. and just keep stitching. And you'll see that there's like a little gap right there where there's no stitches and that'll be totally fine. And you're just gonna stitch. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna go all the way to the end and show you how to finish. I'm gonna just, this is where I started right here. So I'm gonna stitch about an inch past where I started. And that's just gonna cover up previous stitches. Okay, so now I've covered my previous stitches. I'm gonna do the same thing, end the same exact way where I make a knot, or I make, I'm gonna do it the same way where I make a little circle, put my needle in the circle, it makes a knot, push this right underneath, and just clip it on the outside of the binding and you'll never see that again. So now I have a 16 inch pillow. I'm just gonna take it out of its package. I like to take this little tag off. You just unzip your pillow and just pop it in. It's gonna fit nice and perfectly. It's gonna look so great on your couch. And when you put your pillow in, you just kinda wanna tug on your corners and zip it up. And this is your perfect little pillow. It's super cute. We would love for you to subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this so you can learn how to put cross stitch in your home.